Well, good morning to you, good morning. Monday morning, 28th of November. A little bit after five o'clock and the flashy solar powered lights are still flashing and not getting much solar power just at the moment. But on a Monday morning, there is a little ritual that we do here in Azay le Ferrand, which involves people walking about with black sacks. And it's nothing to do with Christmas, it's entirely to do with how the dustbin men come on a Monday morning. And here they are incredibly regular at about five past seven. Which means either you get up early in the morning and put your rubbish out, or what a lot of people do, they put it out the night before. Um, but I, I don't seem to have too much issue with getting up. I, I have people that leap on me and uh, chew the end of my nose if I don't, um, if I don't get up. Something to do with food. Well, they're still flashing. I'm quite impressed with the amount of, or the lack of sun we've had. Yeah. Right, I better jump in the car and, um, I'm going shopping for an L today. Might talk about that later. Well, you've been along this road a few times with me. Yes, on the way to Isersa Creuse to go shopping um, Monday morning, 28th of November 2022. The first Monday of Advent. Yeah, Advent. And I was just thinking about a chap that I used to work with, a man called John. I actually, in my life, I've worked with a lot of men called John, uh, but this particular one was, yeah, yeah, good man, good man. And one day he posed the question to me, what is more important, Christmas or Easter? Now. That, of course, is one of those sort of round and round sort of questions. Which is more important, Christmas or Easter? Well, without Christmas, you don't get Easter. And it's, it's an interesting sort of discussion, contemplation. The birth of Jesus we celebrate on the 25th of December. Uh, that's the day that is selected to celebrate it. Not necessarily historically perfect, but it's a good time to celebrate it. We might think about uh, Mary heavily pregnant with her husband, or no, her, hmm, her betrothed Joseph on the way to Bethlehem to uh, register for the census. That's what happens when you drive a bit slowly. People overtake on a blind hill coming up to a junction. Never mind, we will not be judgmental, will we? Anyway, back to Bethlehem. I think everybody has heard the the, the, the the general story of how you know Jesus was born in a stable and there was a star and there was shepherds that came to um, pay respects and then 
some days later there were the three wise men. I think everyone's familiar with that story. And most people will have some thought about that as they go about their worldly Christmases. But it's much greater than, than that, much greater than buying chocolates for aunties that you only see once a year and wondering how you're going to get 12 people to sit down at the table in your dining room and oh goodness there's going to be arguments about who gets the parson's nose and don't forget granny only likes the dark meat and all those sorts of things but yes how do you get 12 people to sit down have a meal with you. Well, of course, it starts with being born. And being born human. Now, I guess it depends a bit who you mix with, but some people will say, well, how could Jesus be a human baby? And at the same time, God. No, we sometimes will use the phrase son of man, sometimes we'll use the phrase son of God. But of course Jesus was both. And well-read theological scholars will use a funny phrase. They'll talk about a hypostatic union or maybe a hypostatic union, depending what school they went to. That Jesus was both fully human and fully divine. And I guess at Christmas we celebrate very much the completely human nature of this wonderful baby. So, yeah, maybe we celebrate things in a very human way. go shopping and we buy chocolates for aunties that we only see once a year. My eye, there's a Christmas tree being decorated. Jolly good. I would say as it should be because yesterday was the first Sunday of Advent. Well, I went in all the shops, and in all the shops I asked the same question. Have you got an L? And in all the shops, they used various phrases to say they didn't understand what I was asking for. Ah, oh dear. I think it's my French. Maybe it's their English. I don't know. But anyway, eventually I was looking along the shelf and yeah, as they quite rightly said, they hadn't got no L.